life and sang the grand. You tell the story. Sometimes the story don't be nice to tell, but the story have to be told. We are, we are kind of, I don't want to say the back of the bus, because sometimes I don't even think we're on the bus. Hi, my name is Eric Taylor. You may know me as the Pink Panther. And I'm very happy and thankful for life in Sangha Grande for allowing me the opportunity to share my perspectives on my own growth and development as a Sandy Grande boy, as it relates to all of us. You know, a lot of people ask me from time to time, how oh, do you get this name, Pink Panther? And it's simple, the answer is simple, you know. I went to uh, Northeastern College, um, the pride and joy of, of Sangi Grande. And um, in school, in 19, that was 1974, around there, the Pink Panther cartoon was very popular with us um, young people. And um, somehow my classmates deduced that I am the Pink Panther. So they keep calling me Pink Panther, Pink Panther. At first I was vexing. You know. um, but later on, when the teacher, Miss Sergeant, she asked for someone from the class to, to sing a calypso to represent the class. And they all knew I had this poetic inclination because I was shy, and maybe still a little. Um, so to communicate with the girls and them, I used to write little poems, you know, little poems, roses are red and so on, so, so. Um, so I became known as the poet in the class. So when the search came on for a Calypsonian to represent, the whole class said, Miss, 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 um, Eric, Eric, Eric. And um, well, Miss Sergeant said, okay, but you have to have a name like Mighty something or Lord something. I said, but why? They're already calling me Pink Panther, so leave it there. And that is how the Pink Panther as a Calypsonian came in, in, into being. When I left school in 1976, um, I used to take part in the competitions in school. As you know, I represent my class. And coming into the mainstream of Calypso now, well, Sandy Grandi, Sangri Grandi, I have a carnival committee. Um, people like Miss Jennings and they used to be running that. And that served as a real crucible to my development as a Calypsonian. So it's from school to, to take part in the Sandy Grandi carnival competition. And those competitions had singers like Poza, Scrunter, Matapal, Soft Touch, Puppet Master, the heavyweights. That competition was held in a place where that um, RHA building is now, Ascot Cinema. Used to be a cinema there, and the competition was held there. The defending champion was Owen Rez Johnson, the mighty scrunter. He was already singing in Port of Spain with the review tent, and he came to defend his title that night. Well, he was unsuccessful because the Pink Panther take him, you see? And I must say kudos to that brother. He took me to Port of Spain to meet Lord Kitchener. And he said, this is the young boy in Sandy Grande that beat me, you know, Kitch. And that is where my journey with Kitchener began. So from the competing in Sandy Grande, Scrunter took me to Port of Spain to meet Kitchener, and I started to sing in his tent, up to now. Pink Panther, ladies and gentlemen, acting. Year after year, is the same thing I'm hearing. Public servants take care, and they don't pay for nothing. So as a concern, it doesn't make it my business. So take a closer look at the public service. So I check with the nurses, I check with the clerks, went to all the offices, I spent a whole day by works. I talked to the seniors, talked to the juniors, and what I understood 
It look like the public service have more actors than Hollywood. Cause the director, the supervisor, the messenger, the caretaker, the accounting assistant, the hospital attendant, the superintendent, corporal and the sergeant, the dentist, the typist, everybody acting like it's movie that they make. So after that um, Young King victory, you know, simultaneously with that, I've been employed with the, the, the public service, you know. I started with the Ministry of Health, you know, um, with the ERHA and those people there, wonderful people. And um, what went on to community development, where I eventually retired or resigned from, you know. So I spent a good bit of time in community development. I, I was the supervisor for community development in um, Sangre Grande for a long time. And one of the things that, you know, I feel real good about is that this center that we're in right now, it was my handiwork, you know? It was my advocacy that brought this center into being here in Sangre Grande. So I sleep very good in the night to know that I did something in my community as the supervisor of community development. I was able to argue that we get a community center here in Sangre Grande. It is the center for the northeastern burgesses of Sangre Grande. Upper Forster Road, northeastern settlement, the Pine, this center belongs to them. I don't know about the community development today. Um, in my time as community development, the work was not in the office. You had to come out and go plumber. Go Plum Road, go Brigham Hill, go Beach, go up in Brooklyn, go Matlot. You have to actually integrate yourself in the communities. And by doing that, I got a ringside view to a lot of the, the problems that um, face communities. And I felt that I could have used that experience to help come up with solutions. And honestly, I saw politics as such a vehicle. I said, I'm going to go into politics, I'm going to go into the lower house in parliament and advocate for development for Toko and Sandy Grandi. You know, I, in 2010, I, I was successful in terms of the screening. I was the candidate for Toko Sandy Grandi. And um, I didn't win. I didn't win. For whatever reason, I did not win. The winner was a, a man from Arima. So much for supporting your own. Dr. Rupert Griffith, may he rest in peace. You know? And um, the people that campaigned with me in 2010, having gone to the, the, the nooks and the crannies of this, this constituency and seeing the situation firsthand, that night when, when, when we realized we lost the election, I asked them, I said, what are you going to do? And just, just as um, Super Blue sang in the Calypso, they said, no, no, we are going home. Are you ready to go home? No. We don't care about manifesto. Sometimes we don't even know who is the candidate. But if our next election call tomorrow, you know we run in to participate. You know why? Some vote for party. Some vote for it. They don't care about the country and all these problems that we face. And they stayed with Mr. Taylor. And that was the night that the Sangre Grande Development Foundation was born. You see, we couldn't just turn away from what we saw. We couldn't just say, well, we lost the election. Like a lot of people do, they lost, they lost our election and they gone home. We couldn't go home. We stayed together up to this day to try to bring about some kind of solution to enhance the quality of life for us here 
in Sangre Grande. The, the mission statement of the Sangre Grande Development Foundation is quite simple. Enhancing the quality of lives for many through the efforts of a few. You know, we said that once you are sincere and you really want to serve your community, you are welcome on board. So we don't have this expansive membership, you know, but we have a quality membership. We even have an arm that caters for the elderly. And these are people that you will find that are very, very taken advantage of. You know, when you pass by the bank sometime and you see these senior citizens who would have contributed to our, our life here in Sangre Grande, standing up outside the bank at the pension day for hours there in the sun. How, 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 how you could feel about that? You know? So our, our foundation is constructed in such a way that we have different arms that cater for different specific needs of people. The youth arm was just activated, and I must say, I am so happy, finally, to see our young people come together, determined to be active participants in determining their destiny. Listen, when I see the students from Toko having to go to Arima to practice for the intercall, I say, what is this? In San Grande, we don't have a proper recreation ground. There is a place on Ojo Road there that has been open for the past how much, seven, eight years. And it's just like a white elephant. And they, they cut in the grass. And they have security. Protecting what? Up to now, not a basketball game has been played in that center. And that is not the case in Miaro. That is not the case in Digo Martin. You understand? We have, we have similar structures. They are up alive and running and serving the community. Why we in San Diego and we have to go through that? Civil society needs your help to build a strong business and voluntary efforts must be complemented, you know? Oh my God, this man from Point Fourteen, Trevor Lynch, came to Sally Bay and opened that hotel there, and he is sponsoring our steel band. He came from Point Fourteen. We have business people here in Sangre Grande. Come on, we could do this. Let's not be on a one-way street. Profit, profit, profit. What does it profit a man? To gain the whole of Sandy Grande and lose his own soul. Put that in your, in, in your pipe and smoke it. But as I said, bad things flourish when good people do nothing. So I am very happy that life in Sandy Grande is doing something. At least if it's just be talking about it and highlighting the ills, and not just highlighting the ills, coming up with solutions to our problems here in Sangre Grande.